Conference USA, two historic programs, Louisiana Tech and Western Kentucky, they collide in Diddle Arena. Hello and welcome, I'm Brian Klein with John Butler. Very happy to be with you and John. Part of what's made this rivalry so great, so historic over so many years, it's the players, it's the Hall of Famers that we've seen. And today there's a lot of star power as well. Kiana Walker, we'll start with her for Louisiana Tech. Conference USA Preseason Player of the Year. Yeah, averaging 17 points a game. She was first team Conference USA last year. Tremendous, tremendous guard that can score off the dribble. Also 40% from three-point line. Absolute menace, Kiana Walker. And Acacia Hayes, well, to the younger version maybe a little bit, Conference USA Freshman of the Week and WKU relying heavily on her. Yeah, she's been in double figures uh, four straight times. Just two weeks ago, same place, she put 31 up against UTSA. Fantastic freshman. Now, one thing that is not pictured here on her stats is that she's the team's most efficient three-point shooter. And for Louisiana Tech, they've got to keep an eye on WKU's threes. Yeah, the Western Kentucky is eighth in the country in terms of three-point attempts. And one of the reasons why Western Kentucky has won four straight is they're shooting the ball so much better. A big key tonight, can Louisiana Tech defend the three? Well, what about for WKU? What do they need to do? They need to force turnovers. Nine times this year, they forced over 20 a game. That's one, a big, big uh, a key tonight. Can Western Kentucky turn over a really good ball in and team in La Tech? We're just about set to go. The officials today, Brian Enterline, Trey Miles, Neonta Williams. Enterline comes from referee royalty. Yeah, that's exactly right. Big time referee. He's called a ton of big games. 20 NCAA tournaments for him, and we're underway. WKU starts with possession. Lady Tops on a four game win streak. Longest win streak of the year. This is Maya Meredith, reigning Conference USA Freshman of the Year. WKU gets the, the offensive rebound. It's Jalen Foster's turn. No dice. And Louisiana Tech can't get the, offense, the defensive board there. We've got a foul. Jump ball. Or no, a jump ball. Yeah, and that's one, Western Kentucky is one of the better offensive rebounding teams in, 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 the, in the conference and, to be honest with you, in the country. Then right there, two good looks that time from three, two good offensive rebounds. So the Lady Texters came in second in the Conference USA Championship last year, just lost narrowly to Charlotte in the championship game. They return all five starters, 98% of their scoring. Yeah, and they've got a ton of age, too. Six-year players, fifth-year players. Right there's one of the turnovers we just talked about. No one forces more turnovers in the league than WKU. Can they make anything of it? Reigning Conference USA Freshman of the Week, Acacia Hayes. Now it's Lexi Mead. Nice defense by Louisiana Tech. Just held the number one scoring offense, UAB, to 55 a season low. Shot clock down to five. Jalen Foster missed everything, and Maya Meredith could not juggle it back in bounds. Yeah, she had a good look, too, that time from three, but wide left that time. WKU 0 for 3 to start the game from three. And Meredith, or rather Foster, has two of those misses. Meredith with the other. La Tech pushing the tempo. And they're still scoreless. That miss from Mackenzie Worm, the sophomore, out of Allen, Texas, about an hour north of Dallas. This is a Casey Hayes' game. Dribble, drive, and juice. She is a tremendous finisher, too. She's not that big, but she does a great job getting to the rim that time and finished over a 6'4 kid. Western Kentucky in their 2-3 uh, matchup, and they are very aggressive out of it. Here's an open look for Walker. One and done. Well, she's a good three-point shooter. She just shouldn't take a lot of them, but you'd rather her shoot the three than let her get to the rim. That's what she's best at. 40%. She'll only take one or two per game. Maya Meredith has a step. Nifty move, but swiped away. It was Selma Bates. The transfer out of Tulane. Nice recovery defense. Walker trying to finish, and she does. Oh, Louisiana Tech on the board with Thunder to start. That was not an easy finish either, but that's what she is so good at off the dribble. Good pass that time up the floor and an acrobatic uh, shot there right there. Twister of body right there and uh, got the foul and 
has, a, has an opportunity to get the and one. She shoots 78% for the year from the free throw line. Well, that's in case you didn't believe us. <laughs> She's really good at basketball. She's very good. Preseason player of the year in the league. Fifth year player. And I'm not talking about a fifth year. And we're not talking about using a red shirt. She's played five years. Oh, yeah. Over Foster's first foul, WKU's first. Over 120 games in her career. So Western Kentucky at Jalen Foster in a pickle now. Picks up her crumbs, nifty move inside, not enough. And Louisiana Tech forces WKU out of system, and they've got the ball. And that's a big substitution, too. Anna Lar Roberts, uh, Ro Robertson in for uh, La Tech. She's missed the, since December 18th. She's her second leading scorer, and she's in. She's been out with a hand injury. Rustin Product, born and bred. And that is a massive add to the lineup for Louisiana Tech. Nice defense by Maya Meredith there. It's a second turnover for La Tech. Lexi Mee drives inside, count it, and the foul. And that's a point off for turnover. We talked about before the game, Western Kentucky has forced uh, 20 more turnovers nine times. This was, this was off the press, and that's what Lexi Mee does well. She's playing well, too. She's been double figures. <laughs> Five of her last seven games and a great finish at the rim by time. Robin Lee is in. Mackenzie Worm out for Louisiana, or rather, Sylvia Nativi out for Louisiana Tech. My apologies. Robin Lee coming off her best, one of her better games. She had 12 points against UAB last Saturday. Nickname Big Shot Rob. A couple of really key baskets for Louisiana Tech on their way to the championship game last year in Conference USA. Ball away, Jay, one and done. Louisiana Tech, no, actually an offensive rebound. There she is, fresh off the bench after missing a month. It's Anna Laura Robertson. Oh, did they miss her? Yeah, seven and a half rebounds a game. She's her leading rebounder, and she's a fourth year junior. We're tied at fives. Lexi Mead's been playing very well. Maya Meredith now has it. Screen left set by Foster. Shot clock is down to six. Mead needs to make a move. She hoists it up. Lexi Mead wide left. And Louisiana Tech takes in the rebound. That was a really good defensive stand that time by Louisiana Tech. It was Robin Lee ending the WKU possession. Now Walker. Remember, she does not like to take the threes if she doesn't have to. Lexi Mee read the scouting report. Great defense. Here's a Casey Hayes taking it herself. Oh, and she's got it. Casey Again, just a really nice, it looks simple, but it was not a simple move. It was a little hesitation move that time by Hayes. All that set up by the steal by uh, Lexi Mee. Louisiana Tech leads the all-time series 27-24. 11 of the past 12 matchups have gone to WKU, and the leaner for Walker does not fall. Lady Tops take it in transition. Lexi Mead over to Meredith. Now it's Acacia Hayes from distance. Can't connect, and Louisiana Tech with a miscue. WKU gets the ball back. Yeah, a good luck uh, that time by uh, Acacia Hayes. She's normally uh, she's a 45% three-point shooter, and good luck. So far, though, Western Kentucky has not made a three, though they've had some good looks. Now Kiana Walker sits for Louisiana Tech. Loda Sant is in. Maya Meredith takes in the cross-court feed from Acacia Hayes. Shot clock down to 10. Meredith in a double team, throws it up. Too strong. Rebound yeah. to Robertson. That's a tough shot. Another miscue for Louisiana Tech, this time in the backcourt, unpressured. It was Salma Bates. Yeah, that was not forced by West Kentucky. That's just a careless mistake. And uh, Coach Store of Louisiana Tech just <laughs> shook her head. Timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout as well. Hey, Midway hey. through the first quarter. Well, back and forth we go. WKU having trouble hitting their threes. Louisiana Tech right behind them, down by two, right here on ESPN+. Plus. Close one early on, Western Kentucky 7, Louisiana Tech 5. 
Greg Klein, John Butler, happy to be with you. And WKU, you got to wonder, where would they be right now if the threes were falling 0 for 5, and that's such a big part of their identity, John? That is a big part. 0, 0 for 5, uh, I think four out of the five are good looks, but uh, just so far not, not making shots right now. On the other hand, Louisiana Tech has turned the ball over. They've had four turnovers, so uh, that's kind of why we're at a 7-5 game. Both teams are really defending well, though. And you can defend differently, too. Uh, Louisiana Tech is playing uh, very sticky half-court man-to-man. -man. Western Kentucky at 2-2-1 two -two press and falling back into that matchup zone. Uh, what, what, what makes Western Kentucky such a good defensive team is their guards are extremely active with their hands. Three steals already for Western Kentucky. Lex, Lexi Mead has two of those three. A couple of unforced errors, turnovers for Louisiana Tech as well, but... I'm hey, it's early. It's early, and uh, I'm sure they're very, very tickled to get Anna Lar Robertson back. She oh, was yeah. second team All-Conference USA last year, and she gives them some serious strength and rebounding inside. Watek continues in that man-to-man, -man, and they are good at it. Here's Jalen Foster. Nice move on Robertson. Three ball. Only a pits. And WKU's first three of the day. And you, and you give that uh, give that assist too that, that time by, to Jalen Foster. That's a big shot too by, by Pitts. She's only had five points in her last three games. Western Kentucky has switched now to that to a man to man out of the zone. Looks like it paid off for a moment, but Brennan picks up the loose ball. Only six seconds left on the shot clock. Now inside, Lee lost the ball, or did she? Oh, it's a seeing eye assist, and the deuce comes from Robertson down low. Yeah, that's sometimes that's frustrating for a team. That was a really good defensive stand and kind of a loose ball that fell directly into the La Tech uh, hands for an easy shot. Lady Tops up by three, driving kick, nice pocket pass. Yes. It's Maya Meredith off the window. That's clean. Yeah. Great pass again. That's two assists since the timeout for, for Jalen Foster. Lady Tops up by five now, 3.45 left in quarter number one. And, and the Lady Toppers has jumped to a man-to-man. -man. And it works out. Another turnover by La Tech. They switch so freely between the zone and the man defense. It could be in possession as well. Jalen Foster, she capitalizes. Timeout, Louisiana Tech. Wow. And that was all Jalen Foster since the break. She's got two assists and then the three in a corner. And then you add the turn, another turnover by La Tech. Nice run right now by the Lady Toppers, 15-7. And it's a mini 5-0 spurt over the past 45 seconds overall. A 10-2 run. What has WKU done well to get them here? Well, defensively, Western Kentucky has just turned it up a notch. I mean, their guards are so quick with their hands. And Coach Collins does a really good job of switching defense. They, they, they start off in that matchup zone. They're aggressive out of it. Then they jumped, in, they jumped into the man-to-man, -man, very aggressive in the, in, the, in the passing lanes. And they're turning over a really good ball handling team. It's quite impressive. And Louisiana Tech having problems with the WKU defensive scheme. And here's, uh, here's the results of that, Jalen Foster's three. And you can see WKU turning offense into defense. It's tangible. Or rather, defense to offense. Here's Lota Saan. She turns it over. Steal for Jalen Foster. Turnover number six for Louisiana Tech. And Acacia Hayes okay. makes them pay the price. Okay. Deja vu. That's three layups so far by Acacia Hayes. And two of the three are off uh, turnovers by La Tech. Lady Tops up by 10, three minutes left in the first quarter. We'll get the scoreboard fixed for you as soon as possible. Loda Sant misses from three. That's a pretty rare sight. She's now 11 for her last 18 from beyond the arc. So Western Kentucky very much in control. Now Lexi Mead. Gives to Jalen Foster. Missed Aaliyah Pitts on the left wing, but Jalen Foster taking matters into Jaylen her own Foster. hands. Uh, she is having one heck of a quarter. Five points, two assists, and just took that time, just took Robertson right to the basket. So Walk looked like got away with. And now Walker walks through the defense with a dribble and lays it in. 
Yeah, think, Pun intended. Yeah, well, I think uh, Coach Collins wanted to walk. I thought there probably was a walk, but that's okay. So now with Casey Hayes, who has a game best six points, gives to Jalen Foster target practice, but can't connect. That's an awfully good look. Lady Tops very much in the driver's seat in this first quarter. First quarters have been brutal for them. On the season, they're minus 61 in the opening frame and winning every other quarter. Believe it or not, that's a huge improvement. Last weekend, they were plus 22 in the two opening quarters they played against FIU and FAU. Here's Walker stopping and popping on the baseline. Can't connect. Louisiana Tech is one and done. Pedal to the medal for Lexi Meade and wait for the rest of the offense to catch up now. Oh, here's a Casey Hayes to Jalen Foster. Foster putting on a Great clinic. Move. Oh, don't look now. Jalen Foster's a magician. Yeah, Foster. It's the old Kevin McHale up and under move. Great patience on the block that time and set that play up. Wow, Jalen Foster, the catalyst, and she's got seven. A minute left in the first quarter. It's Robertson. Oh, Good nice find. Up. It was the TV on the layup, got her own rebound, and now it's Lee. Fall away, Jay, it falls. Yeah, they, uh, nice play that time by Lee. Ahead to Jalen Foster. And Robin Lee in the passing lane. They've got a jump ball. WKU owns the arrow and a platoon swap for yeah. the Lady Tops. Yeah, this is a this is the old, this is the hockey substitution. Five in, five out. You don't see that a lot. Uh, with 42 seconds uh, left in the quarter, with, with five new players come in for Western Kentucky. Uh, usually you see the bench players in a little bit earlier, but the starters are playing really well. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Both teams have gone deep into their bench. So far in the first quarter, 19 players have played. Odie Betancourt over to Savori, catch and shoot three. No good. Lady Tops are now six for their last eight from the field. Salma Bates over to a shooter herself in the near corner. It's a three for Sant, and that's the Sant that we read on the scouting report. Yeah, 45% three-point shooter, and she was 11 for 17, you mentioned, uh, going into the game. Great shooter, left-handed. Shot clock is now off. Faustino gives to Betancourt. Ball fake, create her own shot, and she Tough does. Shot. Odie Bencourt ends the first quarter with a bang, and WKU putting on a clinic, 23 to 14 over Louisiana Tech. You cannot ask for a better star for Greg Collins and the rest of the topper squad. We've got the second quarter on the other side, right here on ESPN Plus. So far, so good for Western Kentucky through one quarter against Louisiana Tech. And John, the reason is Jalen Foster and her game best seven points. Yeah, it's, she said seven points, not just seven points. She said two assists. She's had a couple of steals as well. And, and then there's a three in the corner right there. She's, she was fantastic that quarter. And there's a drive to the, to the lane right there. You know, when you make the three, that forces people to come out and guard you. And then, then the up and under move on the block. She scored every way that you can score off the drive, off the, off the move on the inside, and then the three. Fantastic quarter by Foster. Like you saw in that last clip, she was marked up by Anna Laura Robertson her first game in about a month for Louisiana Tech. I wonder if Jalen Foster's taking advantage of any rust here. Out of the gate, Louisiana Tech misses a three. It came from Selma Bates, and WKU takes over. Yeah, Salma Bates, point guard, uh, led the team in assists last year. Good three points here, just missed that one. Second unit on for WKU. This is the five that got the last 45 seconds. Odie Betancourt had two, now she's got four. Nice pass from Josie Gilvin. Great pass by Josie Gilvin, and, and Odie Betancourt does not score much at all. She only averages like 1.5, that's her fourth basket. Brennan was stuck. And now they loop it around, it's Bates. Transfer out of two lane, gives it back to Brennan. Nice two three zone for WKU. And Brennan takes it herself, missed off the bottom of the backboard. One and done for La Tech. Macy Blevins, driving kick. The Oregon State transfer, Teresa Faustino, scoop to the hoop, is denied 
Amaya Brennan was amongst the trees in the forest. Yeah, and Faustino coming off her best game of the year, 17 points, five rebounds. She, she's really good at getting to the basket, as you can see right there. That's a good no call. Sneaky athletic. She That's is. the vibe around the locker room. I was talking to Greg Collins about her. And she'll put it on the floor, something she didn't do all that much last year. Shot clock is down to five. Faustino needs to make a move. She hucks it up, and Faustino missed everything. Levin's got the offensive rebound, but it's too little too late. I think Coach Collins thought it may have hit the side of the rim, but uh, he's not going to get that call. So a turnover for WKU. That's their third. Good news is Louisiana Tech is doubling them up in the turnover department with six, all of them in the first quarter. Sant was stuck, found Bates, back to Sant. Catch and shoot three, rims out. And now Sant is one for three. Yeah, that was a slight mistake that time by the Lady Toppers. They left open their wide open shooter, uh, their best shooter in Sant. She's hit at least one three in all but three games this year, and that includes today. Now WKU on the offensive end on nearly a breakaway steal for Brennan. Yeah, Louisiana Tech has switched to a, a matchup 2-3 zone. So giving WKU a bit of a taste of their own medicine here. Now well, they switch back to man. Well, what does it do to an offense when the defense can switch in and out of a scheme so freely like WKU and now Louisiana Tech? Well, sometimes it's confusing because oftentimes your man offense is different from the zone offense. Shot clock was down to four, but then we got a three in the key. Yeah, and, and oftentimes the matchup zone, most coaches against matchup zones just run your, your normal offense anyway. But yeah, it does cause confusion for sure. It's Salma Bates. Oh, nice pass to Sant. Corner three. Doesn't go. Rebound plucked out of the air by Betancourt. A steal for Brennan. She goes up strong. Gilvin is there on the help defense. Lady Textures recycle the possession. Three ball. Green. No dice. And Macy Blevins was found from behind by Sant. Yeah, that was a great block out that time by Macy Blevins that time and caused that uh, offensive foul. Tell you what, this 2-3 zone, matchup zone in Western Kentucky is going back and forth between that and man is really, really good, to be honest with you. It's 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 not the traditional 2-3 zone of the 80s in which you just kind of guard a spot. I mean, they come out and they put pressure on the ball, which makes it really, really difficult. Plus, they, they, they're just so aggressive in terms of reading the passing lanes. Hope Savori, three ball, nothing there. She is over from beyond the arc. And she can really, really heat up. Really good three-point shooter. Bates has it and works it to Walker. Conference USA preseason player of the year. Over to Green, 60-year senior. Back to Walker, and that's a three. It was not an easy shot, too. That was a deep three with, with pressure. Louisiana Tech sticking around. The Lady Tops have been in control throughout. Teresa Faustino. A travel. That is the correct call that time. Walker did a great job of sliding her feet and staying in front of Faustino. So now Faustino is out, Lexi Mead in, and WKU making another swap as well. With Faustino on the bench and Macy Plevins joining her, Maya Meredith comes in. What? You know, it's one of the things that Lady Toppers do quite well is uh, Coach Collins in particular. He is not scared to play a lot of players. So that pass went off of referee Brian Enterlein. We've got a collision on our table here, and Lexi Mead gets up with a smile. Meanwhile, Brennan is in the lane, in the low post, and is fouled on her offensive rebound putback. Yeah, there was a lot of action right in front of us that yeah. time. The, the you ball, good? I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, but it, <laughs> right here's the uh, going to be a foul right here on on that on this shot right here. Good hustle by La Tech. If you squint, you can see John quiver <laughs> out of fear. Well, first of all, you're right. The ball was going to be thrown directly to me out of bounds, but it hit the official in the arm, and he's he's a live player too. But not a live player. He's a live personnel. Yeah. And then Lexi Meade dove right into us as well. First free throw falls for Amaya Brennan. 
77% free throw shooter, the sophomore out of Plano, Texas. Averages eight points a game. Two for two. It's a six point game. WKU led by six at the end of the first quarter. Here's Lexi Mead making a move on Bates inside. Kick out, Karis Allen three, and she sticks it. She's got a really nice looking three jumper. She does not shoot very much at all, to be honest with you. She's no now two for four on the yeah. year. No more for her offensive rebounding. That possession was out of control from the jump. Brennan lost it. Lexi Mead on nice bounce pass ahead. Karis Allen, two for two, no, one for two. And the rebound to Walker. She takes it herself. Four foot J does not fall. Karis Allen rebound. Now the freshman's got a lot of potential for WKU. All three freshmen. Gilvin, Hayes, and Allen. Really good class. Allen didn't, hasn't really played all that much. You can see the brace on her left knee. Stopped her with an injury early on, and now a blocking foul Thank as Lexi Mee drew some contact in the lane. I think that's the right call. We have that on replay right there. Looks like that is the correct call. Walker would not set that time. And uh, to be honest with you, most, most block charges are probably more blocked than charges anyway. That was clearly the correct call. So free throws have become a motif of the WKU offense, and they're not going to get free throws here. I don't believe. No, it's going to be underneath. But they're getting, they're drawing a lot of fouls now, and so much so that against FIU in the win on Saturday, 40% of their points came from the free throw line. Well, that helps to play ahead, but it also helps to take it to the basket too. That core violation, turnover, is the seventh of the day for WKU. It's been kind of the theme right here. The seven turnovers for, for Western Kentucky has not hurt them near as much as, as La Tech's. At one time, it was 13 to three in terms of points off turnovers for Western Kentucky. The Lady Texters are one for their last nine from the field. Salma Bates makes a move inside. Now it's Walker. She takes another three just short. It was online. It was right at it that time. Hope Zavori takes it herself in transition. Wild attempt off the glass. Wow, what a rebound by Josie Gilvin and a jump ball. Yeah, that was probably a force to that time. Hope got into the lane, and normally when you get in the lane at that size, you'd like to kick it out. Really nobody to throw to, but good hustle that time by Gilvin on the offensive rebound. All right, so WKU keeping their distance, 28-19. Here on ESPN Plus, midway through the second. Lady Tops lead the Lady Textures 28 to 19 in what is such a historic matchup between Louisiana Tech and Western Kentucky. If you need proof, there it is. And you can just take a look at the banners up here or in Ruston. There was a stretch of nine consecutive years in the 80s and early 90s when either Louisiana Tech or Western Kentucky were in the Final Four. But what's crazy, John, is that they never overlapped in the Final Four. So everyone was thinking, oh my God, what would it be like if WKU played Louisiana Tech? We gotta get that matchup. And then they did when the two teams okay. joined the Sun Belt in 1991 as Acacia Hayes scores out of the timeout. Yeah, 13 Final Fours for Louisiana Tech. They've won it three times. Western Kentucky, three Final Fours. I mean, you're talking about two historical programs. And Louisiana Tech scores on the other oh, end with wow. Robertson, second team all preseason selection in Conference USA. And Louisiana Tech was led by some familiar names. Kim Mulkey is a four-year starting point guard and then as an assistant coach for the Lady Texans. Brennan takes it herself with contact That's and no right call. Right. Yeah, she's now the coach at LSU, Kim Mulkey. Of course, she made a whole lot of fame at Baylor, a couple of national titles. Here's Jalen Foster. Extra feed, Aaliyah Pitts three. Can't get it to go. Nice volley for Jalen Foster. Back to pitch, she'll take it again. But no dice, and Brennan tracks down the rebound, hitting the deck. And Louisiana Tech will go without Brennan as she's slow to get up. 
Walker, baseline drive, reverse layup. Nothing there. Nice defense by Maya Meredith, though, steering her off track. A lot of action right here, and I love how the game has been called, to be honest with you. They're letting them play. A bump here, a bump there. You just got to play through it. Jalen Foster has seven points. Jump pass intercepted. Yeah, she should have taken the shot that time. She got in the middle of the lane wide open and tried to pass, and she should, should have taken the shot. The Italian Stallion, Sylvia Nativi, now a quarterback in the offense for Louisiana Tech. Now Lee. Casey Hayes hot on her tail. Greg Collins saying that her defense is growing quicker than even her offense. And Lee rims out. Nice defense there by the freshman Hayes. Lead pass ahead. Aaliyah Pitts now in trouble on the baseline, and she stepped out of bounds. Yeah, that pass led her a little bit too much, and uh, you could probably make an argument. There may have been a little hand check as well, but like I said, the referees are letting them play. Looks like we have a 30-second timeout right now. So now Louisiana Tech down by seven. This has pretty much, much been the margin for the game. And we take a look now at what just happened with Aaliyah Pitts, was just in trouble, got a little spooked here, tried to make a move and lost her balance. It looked like she might have gotten rid of the ball before she stepped out of bounds, but we're not getting an official review of that. And she may have dribbled the ball on the baseline as well, too. Maybe. It's close. Greg Collins is not asking for another look. Got a good ball game though, 30 to 23 and defensively. I, I don't think from the Lady Topper perspective that you can play any better defensively. Forcing La Tech into almost double digit turnovers and doing a great job of contesting their shooters as well. The TV hounded by Aaliyah Pitts with only two and a half minutes to play in the first half. It's Keanu Walker. Making a move inside. Oh, nifty duck move, and the push shot does not fall. Maya Meredith picks up the loose ball. Wraparound pass, Maya Meredith. For a cutter, it's Lexi Mead keeping it in bounds, but at what cost? Mead is still out of bounds, regaining her footing. Bates in transition. She was fouled hard. Yeah, she, that's, that's an ankle injury right there, it looks All like. Right. Salma Bates that time looked like to me she stepped, possibly stepped on Maya Meredith's foot. Now here's what happened to Lexi Me tripping over some chairs there. Yeah, it's the second time Lexi has been into the crowd. She ran into us over here earlier, and that time went through the, the as Bill Walton said, the little chairs. And now we, we can't speculate on what this injury may or may not be, but it looks like Bates is favoring her right leg. Yeah, I thought she, I thought she stepped on uh, Maya Meredith's foot. That's what it looked like to me coming down. Now she's been the starting point guard in every game for Louisiana Tech since transferring from Tulane. Yeah, good player. Uh, she had five game, game winners last year, too. And for that, she earned the nickname Buzzer Beater Bates. <laughs> we'll keep an eye on her and see, see if she's okay. But Mandy Miller right now, the head athletic trainer, is taking a look at her, and that's why. So we'll keep you posted. Meanwhile, Louisiana Tech brought Robin Lee in to replace her. And now Walker, scoop to the hoop, a denial. It was Josie Kilvin, the freshman, saying, no, no, not right now, not in my house. This is called help side defense, and Josie comes out of nowhere that time. And Josie's long, she's six foot freshman, got long arms, good block by Gilvin. The TV gets it in, Walker can't put it in. And Odie Betancourt was fouled. Yeah, it was a nice inbounds play at that time. But again, great help side defense by Western Kentucky to block that shot. Western Kentucky is not known to block very many shots, but that's two just in this last possession. The Lady Tops are last in the league in blocks per game with only about one and a half per in the league. Macy Blevins has been quiet. Oh, nice pass. It's Hope Savori inside, and Blevins gets credibly assist as well she should. That's a great backdoor cut, but even a better pass by Macy Blevins to Hope Savori. 32-23, West Kentucky just on a, just a tremendous first half. Hope Savori on the board for the first time today. 
Orm in trouble. Nice perimeter defense by Betancourt. A pass inside and another denial. Robin Lee nowhere to go. It's Faustino looking for a trailer. Hope Savori now. Inside, got some contact and a blocking foul. That's going to be two on Walker as well that time. I thought that may have gone the other way, but going to give the foul on Walker. You see Hope Savori coming to the lane. And uh, that's that was closer than the, uh, the previous block, but no complaint by, by the uh, Louisiana Tech uh, coaching staff. Keanu Walker is obviously so valuable to what Louisiana Tech does defensively and offensively. Now she sits. They're going to have Abby to, Green in. Yeah, Louisiana Tech is going to play the last 50 seconds of this half without two starting guards. With Walker out in a bit of foul trouble, and then Salma of course Bates. Salma Bates out with what looks like an injury, and she's still being checked out by Mandy Miller, the head athletic trainer. First free throw is good for Hope Savori, a 68% free throw shooter. Junior out of Louisville, Kentucky. And she can't get the second. Remember, free throws were so big for WKU last weekend and the win over FIU, 40% of their offense at the charity strike. So now Nativi is the primary ball handler for the Lady Texters. She actually leads the team in assists, so she's very comfortable doing that. Fifth in the nation in assist to turnover ratio. Lee is stuck, kick out, green three, left it way short, and an offensive rebound, and a big time block, but Betancourt is called for a foul. Betancourt swooped in, didn't like the call, and boy, the fans didn't either. Yeah, I couldn't tell if it was on Gilvin or Betancourt, but that was uh, a good offensive rebound, first of all, by Robertson. If there was contact that time, it's probably with the body. So Robertson at the stripe. She hits the first. This is her first game in a month. It's hard to argue with the official that made the call. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Brian. Uh, uh, Enterline. Enterline, who's called probably a billion games on a lot of big games. 20 NCAA tournaments, a few Final Fours, some time in the WNBA, and his wife is a D1 referee. His two kids are D1 referees. So yeah. he knows what he's talking about. I'm sure they know how to settle disputes in the household. <laughs> and team up. Shot clock is off. Faustino with the keys. Draws the double, Betancourt now. Blevins was calling for the ball, she's got it. Long three on the way, Macy Blevins, she can't hit. And WKU will settle for an eight point advantage at the halftime break. Yeah, I think if you're Western Kentucky, you're, you like where you're at. 33-25, a tremendous defensive effort by, by the Lady Toppers. The losing the attack, probably needed that timeout to, to make some corrections this second half. Should be a good one. Louisiana Tech ended that second quarter, one for their last seven. WKU's defense and then some broken down at halftime. Don't go anywhere. Western Kentucky up by eight, 33 to 25. They dominated the first 20 minutes and La Tech stuck around, but hey, the Lady Texters have a lot of firepower on their bench because they've got some royalty and they both share the same last name, Brooke Storr and her husband, Scott Storr. Now, Brooke is the head coach. She's been that for seven years, but when she took the Louisiana Tech job, she took her husband with her, and she says, yeah, you know what? It's hard enough to find someone who knows how you work, knows how you think, not to mention someone who's your best friend, so it was kind of a no-brainer, but Scott is technically the co-head coach because the state of Louisiana has some interesting ethics laws when it comes to hiring your own spouse, so that's the workaround. They met when Scott was a full-time assistant at Florida State, and Brooke was a grad assistant at Florida State. But coincidentally, they played against each other with Scott as an assistant coach uh, at, with North Texas, and Brooke was a player for the Lady Texters. Yeah, it's, 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 the, second, it's the second game that, uh, that we've called this year where you had a husband-wife. Vanderbilt as well had that. But yeah, uh, Brooke Storr done a really good job there. Former player, she made a Final Four appearance uh, herself, and at one time was the all-time leading free throw shooter. Yes. Uh, and I don't know if that's still, still. I'm talking not just at La Tech. I'm talking about NCAA. Yeah, she's since lost that record, but hey, that's okay. And Greg Collins 
on the other side for WKU and trying to combat. Hey, two on one, that's that's never fair, but he's trying to do his best. He's got a good that's, staff, but no. you've got two head coaches on the other sideline. And, and Coach Collins, we, of course, we see Coach Collins a lot, a great, great X and O guy, and uh, has done a really good job since, t since taking over at, at Western Kentucky. Now what's interesting as we go back to what Louisiana Tech has done is that it's not the first time that Louisiana Tech has had a co-head co head coaching tandem. Leon Barmore and Son Sonja Hoke, together in the 80s, went to four Final Fours together as co-head coaches. Might as well. And they both had their own head coaching reigns at Louisiana yeah. Tech as well. There you go. If it works, it works. The other thing uh, for people who have, are about my age, uh, the other thing that, that, that you remember Louisiana Tech for for years and years and years was their jersey. Yes. Uh, they, they wore the full uh, sleeves for years and years and years, and I don't know how long they, they've gotten out of that, but for years they had the sleeves in their jersey. Kind of like Evansville and men, to be honest with you. I'll take the baby blue in any denomination, though. Probably the best color in sports, if you ask me. Got a foul out of the gate here to start the second half. Robertson was bumped. I think Robertson is getting well. I mean, that's a little screen roll. At the time, she just dove right to the basket that time. She's been out with a hand in injury, but you really can't. You haven't been able to tell at all. Foul goes on Maya Meredith, and that's pretty important because the Conference USA Freshman of the Year now has three, and Josie Gilvin takes her place. Nativa inbounds up top. Walker was open. And now it's Nativa in the corner for three. Way too strong. And Robertson could not hacky sack it back in bounds. Yeah, she shoots 35% for the year, but man, that was uh, about a foot too long. So now WKU takes over. Lexi Mead had three first half points, working to Acacia Hayes. Conference USA Freshman of the Week, drive and kick Jalen Foster. Back to Hayes. She's got some room past Brandon. Righty layup does not fall. That's her game, though. She likes to penetrate the paint. Yeah, I thought she had a little pull up about five feet, but went on to the rim that time. Just missed it. She normally makes that shot. Nice pass to Robertson underneath, but Robertson can connect from point blank. And WKU's got numbers. It's a Casey a Hayes. Josie Gilbert was open for three. Hayes couldn't find her bullet feet. Inside for Foster. Layup goes. Count it. And the foul. Now, that time Robertson way late getting down the floor that time. And good read that time and pass to Foster. Foster continues your good play. Have an opportunity to get an and one. Right here's the pass from Lexi Mead. And right there is the foul and, and one opportunity by Jalen Foster. Jalen Foster. Still stuck at nine points, but now WKU nearly revived the possession there after missing the free throw. Foster's got nine. It is a game best. Four of eight from the field. She's been great. Nativi guarded by Foster. Jalen played some great defense as well. Well, that's what her versatility. Uh, Foster normally guards a four or five. She's out there guarding a point guard. Now it's Keanu Walker trying to motor past me. To no avail. Shot clock down to three. Walker needs to throw it up. Spinning inside. Double team and a foul at the shot clock buzzer. It's going to be, a, I think it's a correct call that time. It's going to be a call on Foster that time. Looked like to me he hit Walker in the head on this spin. If you, if you watch this right here, spin right into her and looked like she got right kind of across the face that time. I think the question that the fish are going to look at was it a shot clock violation first? Yes. That's going to be the uh, decision they're going to make. They can review it, but they won't. It's a foul on Jalen Foster. Now, I don't know about the two shots. They're going to give her two shots. I thought the foul, I do think it was a foul, but I'm a little surprised we're giving it two. It looked like to me it was on the floor. Well, if there's anyone that you don't want to second guess, it's that guy. The head official, Brian Enterline, as we mentioned, comes from referee royalty as Walker gets the Conference USA preseason player of the year role on that first free throw. Yes, she, yeah, that's <laughs> exactly right. I mean, she shoots 78% and so far has been contained, I think you could say, can say, but she's up to 10 points now, so she's she's more than halfway to her average. She's had to work hard for it, though.
Here's a case of Hayes. Guarded toe to toe by Walker. Give it to Meade. Western Kentucky's offense has been better and better as the season goes on. Shot clock down to five. Casey Hayes has it from 18 and can't connect. Loose ball foul on Jalen Foster. It's back to back fouls on Jalen Foster. It's going to put her at two right here. I'm going to call her over back. It was potential. I think LaTeX wanted to charge, first of all. It's going to be a foul on the rebound. Well, only two fouls on Foster. You'll take that if you're a WKU fan in the third quarter. She's had a bad habit of fouling out of games, and Greg Collins saying to her, really, that's the one thing you need to improve on going forward into conference play. Robin Lee lost the ball and then jumped on it on the floor, and a foul is called on Lee trying to get it back. Yeah, again, it's quick hands that time by Gildon causing that mistake and, uh, and then foul. Give La Tech their ninth turnover. A whistle blown by referee royalty, like I mentioned, Brian Enterline. His two sons, D1 refs, his wife a D1 ref, and he himself, WNBA Finals ref, NCAA Final Four ref. 20 NCAA tournaments. Now it's Acacia Hayes up top. Over to Jalen Foster. Ball fake got Robertson in the air. Shot clock down to five. Extra feed for Foster. Shot clock winding down, and Foster can't connect. Hayes can't, can't get the offensive rebound cleanly, but she's fouled. It's going to be on Walker. It's going to be on her third. And right now, Western Kentucky is doing a great job on the offensive board. Right here is Hayes. Not very big. We just went up and got it, and that's a clear foul on Walker. It's her third. So now Walker is out, and Loda Sant is in for Louisiana Tech, but they lose that star power. So that's big. Lexi Mead now showing off her handles. It's Aaliyah Pitts in the high post. Nice defense by Brandon. Pitts on her pivot foot, can't get it to go, and a jump ball is called. With Robertson and Foster resting for possession. That's yeah, another offensive rebound right now for, for the Lady Toppers. You see that hustle right there. If you're a WKU fan, you're just happy it's not a foul on Foster at this point. Yeah, I think uh, it depends on which side you're on right there. La Tech probably saw that as over the back. I thought that was the correct call at that time. You see top of your screen, Aaliyah Pitt sits, and Maya Meredith comes in. This looks like it could be a big stretch for WKU. You've got your star, if you're a Lady Topper fan, on the floor in Meredith, reigning Conference USA Freshman of the Year, and Louisiana Tech's ace is sidelined with her third foul. Shot clock is at seven. Meade gets it in for Foster. Need to make a move. It's Meade guarded by Lee. Inside, Lexi Meade off the window yeah. and in. Counted in the foul. With the shot clock at one, Lexi Meade going to the stripe. That was a tough shot too. Lexi Meade's not very big, but that time she went rejected the screen, went in there and got the foul right right on the head as she went in there. Tough shot by Lexi Mead. But Lexi Mead is a player last year averaged about 11 points a game at eight and a half now and has really turned it up. Last last three games, last two games, she had 19 against FIU and 16 against FAU. Starting to really play better. And Lexi Mead has been a very strong backcourt defender as well. And you can in part credit her for that wild pass, a turnover, official steal to Jalen Foster. A 2-2-1 two, two, pressure by Western Kentucky. It's a Casey Hayes, she'll take the three. Ed Hayes can't connect, too strong. Rebound Brennan. Wild, out of control look for Brandon in the corner, trying to wrap it around on the baseline and hit the backboard. Yeah, that's an understatement to say that was a bad turnover. I mean, that was just out of control and just, you're, you're correct, that's a wild turnover. One of the things that's going on right now with La Tech is they have two of their guards out of the game, and Walker and then their point guard is out with an injury. Gilvin swooped in but could not connect on the easy layup. Robertson was there for the intimidation closeout. And now Nativi is in the front court. Robertson lines it up, 
and connects. So WKU misses a layup, and John, I'm just taking your words out of your mouth. Miss layup, and on the other end, it's pretty much an automatic basket, no? It, it seems uncanny. If you miss a layup on one end, it generally ends in points on the other end. Working to the corner. Meade trying to force the issue to Meredith. Long to Josie Gilvin bottom. Josie Gilvin. Josie Gilvin does not score a lot, but that's uh, she's known as a defensive player, but you're talking about improvement from, from shooting. She has massively improved her shot. That's her first basket, reigning state champion in Kentucky. A uh, back-to-back state champion. I want to show that Sacred Heart, and they're the favorite to win it again, too, by the way. Tic-tac-toe to the low post, and Robertson could not hacky sack it back in bounds. Just another turnover mistake. I do think that Louisiana Tech really misses Selma Bates, their point guard. Turned her ankle, it looked like to me, at the end of the first half. She's yeah. not back, and then you throw out Kiana Walker. And, Foul trouble. Uh, with foul trouble, so uh, they are struggling right now with uh, personnel. Nice find from Kilvin. Foster's fouled on the way up, and Robertson is the culprit. Yeah, it's good, good pass that, that time to Foster, but Foster did a good job of using her body, jumped into that time Robertson and drew the foul. Jalen Foster's at the free throw line on the other side when we return. WKU up by 11. Western Kentucky up by 11 on Louisiana Tech. A big reason why is that Casey Hayes and the freshman has eight points, but you can really credit her and her development to the grand assistant coach for WKU. And Lady Topper fans might know her by her really star name, Whitney Creech, and she was great for the Lady Tops very recently as the point guard, played from 2016 to 2020. But Hayes says that her ball security is credited to Creech, and and why not? Best assist to turnover ratio in the league her senior year. Yeah, Whitney Creech was a really good player here at Western Kentucky, but uh, left-handed player, but she's uh, one of the all-time leading scorers in the state of Kentucky. She averaged, get this, over 50 a game at Jenkins High School. Uh, uh, and when she came to Western Kentucky, was not really known as a scorer and really developed into really a pass-first point guard. She's another Back in the day, she won Conference USA Freshman of the Week. Acacia Hayes is currently the Conference USA Freshman of the Week. Jalen Foster goes two of two. Robertson found her on the way up before the break. And now Louisiana Tech down by 13, John. What's the name of the game for the Lady Texters? Well, they need to start getting some shots off. They've 12 turnovers. They've made four so far in the first four minutes of, the, of, the, of this third quarter. So they are really struggling even to get a good shot right now. Nice defense by Gilvin on a TV hit the back leg of Acacia Hayes. Loose ball in the key, and we've got a jump ball here. Maya Meredith was fighting for possession underneath with Worm. Well, I don't know if that's going to be their 13th turnover or, or not. Uh, Western Kentucky never really got possession there, but it should have been a turnover. Just a bad decision that time by La Tech trying to force the back cut. I think this is a good move by Coach Stewart putting Walker back into the game. They are really struggling just to get a shot. But one thing that Kiana Walker can do is get a shot. She has 10 points, which is a team best for Louisiana Tech. Conference USA preseason player of the year. They go right to her on the inbounds. Shakes past Gilvin, twirls around another defender, but can't connect on the layup. That is a hit to the stomach for Brooke Storr. Yeah, good move, went all the way down, just came out. La Tech has switched into, it looks like a 3-2 zone. 3-2 zone tends to be, uh, it really stops penetration, tends to be a little vulnerable inside if you can get the ball inside a 3-2 zone. So far, they can't get it inside. Outside, let's try that. Lexi Meade can't connect, and the rebound goes to Worm. And TV into the front court. She's the ball handler for most of the second half so far with Walker mostly off the bench. And she's in foul trouble. She's now on the floor. And then, of course, starting point guard Selma Bates on the bench still with an apparent injury. But they get a layup there with Worm. And a good cut that time on McKenzie Worm. 6'4 sophomore. She leads a team in blocks, 26 blocks. She is long. 
Here's Maya Meredith. Nice ball fake to shake. Brennan, long two, too strong. And Walker tracks it down. Does not have numbers, does not care. She throws it up off the glass. No dice. Walker gets the loose ball, and a foul is called. And that's her fourth. Wow. So that is a doomsday scenario for Brooke Store. Get her back on the floor and hope that she can claw your way back. And now she's at four fouls. Yeah, I think that was the right call putting her back in that time. And she just missed the layup. You know, oftentimes, like I said, missed layups generally leads to points on the other end or that time the fourth foul on Walker. And she is very, very frustrated over on the bench, too. She normally makes those shots. And more, maybe even more importantly than the fourth on Walker, the fifth on Louisiana Tech. So now it's bonus basketball for the next three minutes for WKU. Yeah, Lexi Millie, uh, arguably the best free throw shooter on Western Kentucky's team, 82%, and uh, has really shot it well lately. I think she's 41 out of 49. I believe that's right. Greg Collins saying she might be small in stature. Do not underestimate her heart. No, she is. Uh, she's playing now the way she played last year. Uh, Lexi Mee, just a tremendous defender. I called her a bull bulldog last, last year when I watched her play. Worm, not comfortable from that range. Slings it over to Brennan, 10 on the timer. Driving kick, it's Lee. Stops and pops, rims out. Loose ball taken in by Worm, and her put back doesn't go. But a foul, and Josie Gilvin is the culprit. Yeah. Lottak is going to have to find some offense somewhere that time. That was a good move by Lee, that little pull up. I like that pull up. Just missed it, and that's where uh, Worm came in and for the offensive rebound. Good size young lady, 6'4", from Allen, Texas. 81% from the free throw line. She has good touch. Last game she came up with, she had six points, four rebounds, and five blocks in a win against UAB. That was the best blocking performance by a lady texter since 2014. She's got a nice stroke from the line. Got great follow through. So La Tech is still hanging around here, 11 point game. I've been trouble getting over the hump though, and you look at the scoreboard, wow, 33 points. And Turnover. Shocked there, and now maybe some points here for Louisiana Tech on the other end. It's Nativi laying it in. Well, the switch to a 3-2 zone has been quite effective. That led to that turnover. And so far, Western Kentucky has not scored against this 3-2 zone. They've gotten to the free throw line, though. Josie Gilvin intercepted by Worm. Here comes Louisiana Tech. It's Lee making a move on Meade. Bullet feed ahead, and it's taken in, intercepted by Lexi Meade. Good no pass. look pass, it's Josie Gilvin, and she puts an exclamation mark on that one. Well, Gilvin got, the, Gilvin got the steal on one end, hustled down, and a no look pass by Lexi Meade for the finish by Gilvin. And Lexi Meade with a foul in the backcourt. That allows WKU to get their platoon swap in. Five fresh players coming in for the Lady Tops, but that, will that does put Louisiana Tech in the bonus. It's going to put Amaya Brannon on the line right there. That was the correct call that time. It was a good hustle play that time by Lexi Mead. But just try to reach through the, the offensive player. Brannon has been very quiet. Eight points a game, five and a half rebounds. Amaya Brannon, sophomore out of Plano, Texas. 77% free throw shooter. Well, they, they are a very good free throw shooting team. Shoots 77%, kind of like middle. I think middle, middle Tennessee is, uh, leads the conference. Mid, middle is right around 80, but 77% is a... So Middle Tennessee is 78%, 78. which is best in the league. Last year, Louisiana Tech shot 76% which was a program record. Yeah, you win a lot of games if you can make free throws. See how Western Kentucky attacks this 3-2 zone. Karis Allen, extra feed. Hope Savoy three, why not? Hope Savoy fresh off the bench. Well, that's the other area of a 3-2 zone. It's a little weak, it's the corners. And uh, Hope Savoy is uh, arguably our best three-point shooter. Shoots at a 37% clip. Here's Worm, giving the keys to Lee. Kick out, 
Song could not handle it cleanly. Over to the TV. Do not go in there. Odie Bettencourt with the block. That's the third block of the game for Western Kentucky, a team that does not block very many shots. That's a good, a good help side defense that time by Bettencourt. And she has been a brick wall off the bench for WKU. Question is, can the offense complete the play? With the third quarter winding down, the shot clock as well. Bettencourt is there. Defense and offense, what can she do? Six points for Bettencourt. And that was an excellent feed that time by Harris. By Allen, I'm sorry. Wow, so now Lady Texters have a lot of ground to cover, trying to get a head start before the fourth quarter here. Five seconds left. Lee in the lane. Nice defense by Savori. Lee throws it up. Too strong. And WKU takes a 51-36 advantage into the fourth quarter. Very impressive for WKU. The bench producing as well. 51-36 when we return on ESPN+. Plus. Fifty-one thirty-six, Western Kentucky on top of Louisiana Tech, and a big reason why the bench points outscoring La Tech nineteen to thirteen. Odie Bettencourt is the star of the bench show for WKU, and John, it started on defense. No way, do not go in there. But then on the offensive end, Bettencourt was producing as well. Yeah, Odie has uh, played fantastic. She's somebody who's not played a lot of minutes this year for Western Kentucky, but she has six points, a couple of blocks, a couple of rebounds. Has played very, very well. I mean, defensively for the Lady Toppers, it's about as good as you can play. Outscored uh, the Lady Texers 20 to nine of points off turnovers, and it's really slowed them down. Only 36 points so far by La Tech. Oh, nice tic-tac-toe, and Bettencourt right on cue. She's got another. Well, they finally got the ball in the middle of that 3-2 zone, and that was an outstanding high-low pass that time uh, by the Lady Toppers. That was Pitts to Bettencourt. And it's a 7-0 run for WKU. I don't know how long that La Tech can go with Walker on the bench. I know she has four, but the game is starting to get away a little bit from La Tech. It's going to be a big decision that Coach Storr is going to, have to make. Here's Lee. Tough jumper and the foul. It's going to be an and one opportunity. It's going to be a foul on Hope Savori. You can see that nice little hesitation move that time by Lee. Kind of got into her body a little bit. Not a ton of contact, but. Uh, Lee's got an opportunity to finish this off. And Robin Lee has been thrown into the fire as one of the primary ball handlers today with Salma Bates leaving in the first half with an apparent injury and then Kiana Walker on and off the floor with foul trouble. The transfer, or rather the sophomore, hits the free throw. A little 2-2-1 light pressure by Louisiana Tech and they uh, Switched, now they're staying in their zone. Macy Blevins wanted the ball, she's got it. Low post feed, Bettencourt plucks it out of the air. She can't connect on the layup, but the follow goes. Oh, she's playing oh, volleyball by Bettencourt. herself, and it does not matter. I can't believe she got the first pass by Macy. I thought that ball was way too high. Just great athleticism by the South Florida transfer, Bettencourt. She's got 10 points. That's a career high, to say the least. Didn't score 10 in her year. At USF. Well, that's the thing about the, the Lady Toppers is, is you really don't know who's going to score or do what each game. They have got, they tend to play 10 to 11 every night, and their leading score that right now for the Lady Toppers is only averaging close to 11. Just a lot, wide variety right there. It's good hustle that time by Lee, but, but there was the lower body contact. Good call. Glad nobody's hurt. That's a deep three by Macy Blevins from from the IGA stand over there. Going to be a foul on the rebound. I think Karis Allen with some nice hustle right there. You could see what Greg Collins loves about her game. And Robertson was calling for the foul. It's her second. Greg Collins says he sees Karis Allen more as a big guard than a smaller forward. Gives Odie Bettencourt another chance. She's got 12. Oh, yeah. Here's the Odie Bettencourt show. Have a day. 
She's only averaging 6.9 minutes a game, not points. <laughs> she's averaging less than two points a game, only less than seven minutes a game, and then she's got 12 points. She scored four points the entire season at USF, and she climbs the ladder for another rebound. Hope Savori, nice feed to the baseline for Leah Pitts, and Pitts puts it up. Can't get it to go. Robertson on the baseline. Did she sit out of bounds? She did. And just great hustle by a lot by, by the Western Kentucky. So now Robertson has to sit. Remember, you can see that wrapping on her right hand. She's not 100%. It's her first game in a month, but Louisiana Tech is dying for the production they had from her before the injury. I'm sure her wind is not quite there, to be honest with you. Been out so long. I think she's done a good job first game back. It's handled by Karis Allen, and Hope Savory was looking for Blevins. Blevins was fouled. Yeah, posting up Macy Blevins. Macy Blevins, a good-sized guard, 5'10", going to get the foul that time. It's going to be on uh, number 12, Gabby Green. It's Green's first foul. Gabby Green set out last year due to an injury. She started, she played three years at Pitt. Yeah. Well, that was a big get for Louisiana Tech out of the transfer portal. And when she had to sit, it was, uh, it was, it was a tough blow. And a lot of Lady Texture fans were thinking, well, if she was able to play, they probably would have walked away from last season with a ring. Odie Betancourt, the shot clock winding down. Are you kidding me? What planet is Odie Betancourt on, and how do I get there? Have a day. 14 points and playing with a smile on your face. And I don't blame you. This will put a smile on your face. Wow. Odie Betancourt cannot be stopped. Now it's Gabby Green and a silencer three. She's not scored her last two, two games, so that's a big bucket for Gabby Green. Another one for Odie Betancourt. There's the heat check. And Lee takes in the rebound for Louisiana Tech. The game's not over. It's 15. And La Tech is too good to lay down. So I, I've got a feeling La Tech's got one more run in them. Here's Lee. Shakes past Blevins. Drive and kick. Three ball on the TV. Rims it in. Louisiana Tech is four for their last five from the field. Down to 12, and that's a wide open shot too. Another good pass by Lee. Here's Macy Blevins, guarded by Gabby Green. Blevins gets the screen, spins past the nail, and puts it up, a foul on the floor. Ball at number 12, Gabby Green, second, team four. Latek has gotten Walker, Walker back into the game. I think this is a kind of a critical period right now. It's 556. West Kentucky up 12 right here. Lie Tech starting to has had back to back threes. Western Kentucky needs to score to kind of stop that momentum. Keanu Walker has four fouls. One more and she's done. Odie Betancourt could not corral it in the post. Karis Allen revives the possession. Now it's Aaliyah Pitts. Back to Betancourt. Feed the beast. Fall away, Jay. No. And another loose ball. Aaliyah Pitts has it. Stops and pops. Pitts can't connect. And Gabby Green gets the rebound. Louisiana Tech settles it. And they dodge multiple bullets on that one trip. If Louisiana Tech comes back, it feels like it's got to be now. I think they're, they are on a, a little run right now. Yeah. Mini 6-0 spurt here over the past two minutes. WKU, though, they're getting ready to bring those starters back. And that's exactly what they'll do here. Starters are in. Josie Gilvin is the only non-starter on the floor right now. Well, a pass too hot to handle. A steal for WKU. Turnover number 16 for Louisiana Tech. And the starters are in with a 12-point cushion. Jalen Foster has 11 points. Gives the keys back to Meade. Shot clock down to eight. Back to Foster. Catch and shoot three. Way short. Rebound to Nativi. 
Western Kentucky got them a little cold this quarter, only eight points so far. Nice pass by the TV and Warren finishes. It's an 8-0 run for Louisiana Tech and they're only down by 10. I would not be surprised for a timeout coming soon. We've got a media timeout. I don't know if Coach Collins wants to save them. Uh, Meade, a big time three. That was a big one right there. Big, big three. Back. She's been Lexi. working on that, that part of her game all season, 26%. She knows that she can shoot better. One and done for Louisiana Tech from beyond the arc. And here's a Casey Hayes. Uses the screen, switch to Walker. Hayes drives inside, her layup does not go, even though she got a step on Walker, and now a foul, Lexi Mead is the culprit. It's her second. Team's third, and we'll take a timeout. Louisiana Tech down by 13. They need to make a move, and it's got to be on the other side here on ESPN+. Plus. Well, it's now or never for Louisiana Tech. Down by 13 on WKU with only about four minutes left. And Lady Texter has just had an 8-0 run stopped by Acacia Hayes and her three, but hey, Make some shots and good things will happen. Yeah, big three that time by Gabby Green, and this should be a, a, a shot by a three by Nativi. And then one way that you can make up points quickly is by making threes. So now Nativi is quarterbacking the offense out of the timeout for Louisiana Tech. Lady Texters, 11 and 6 on the year, fourth in the conference standings, going up against a red hot WKU team on a four game win streak, chance to go to five. In about three and a half minutes here, Gabby Green missed everything on her three. And WKU is tied with UTEP for second place in the conference standings. So this game has major implications. It's about that time of the year when you can look at the standings. Meredith over to Acacia Hayes. Skips past the TV. And back to me, WKU in no rush. Now it's Jalen Foster, ball fake on Romberson. Drives, picks up her dribble, throw on the timer, and a turnover. Louisiana Tech keeps it inbounds on the sideline and a jump ball. Jump ball possession, ladies I was get, just getting ready to say that was a really good possession there for Western Kentucky. They was working the shot clock down but never got the shot. It looked like they passed up a couple near the end. Yeah. When, when you want. Lady Texter's on the arrow here, and they get a sub with Robin Lee in for Gabby Green, and Amaya Brannon will sub in for Lota Sant, who's been very quiet for Louisiana Tech. Three-point sharpshooting threat has three points. And Western Kentucky stays in their matchup. Almost now looks like a 1-3-1 one, one matchup. Such a fluid defense. Now Walker knives through the zone, and she's got a layup. She's been very much uh, contained so far, 12 points, and she has been in foul trouble, but a great defensive job by the Lady Toppers on Walker. Here's Lexi Mead trying to return the favor and an offensive foul. I think that's the correct call. That you time. know what? Kiana Walker took a risk there. She's got four. A blocking foul would have ended her night, and heck, she's the preseason player of the year. Let's go ahead and say it. Would have ended the night for the Lady Texters. More than likely, that's correct. But I thought that was a correct call, no complaint. And then she did a great job of sliding over and taking that charge from Lexi Mead. Nativi now. Valuable possession for Louisiana Tech. All of them are. When you're down by 11 with 2.15 left. Double team in the corner. Walker nowhere to go, or does she? What wow, a shot. she teleports through the defense and lays it in. What a shot. Underneath the basket going right and finishing with her left hand. That's a tough shot. Now La Tech has got it under 10 with two minutes to go. Western Kentucky slowing it down, or are they? Acacia Hayes found a lane. Acacia Hayes uses it, can't connect on it, and now Walker, She's got the rebound in transition. Pedal to the metal, draws the double, and contact, and a call. Lexi Mead thought it was a clean swipe, and the point guard for WKU picks up her fifth foul. Let's watch this right here. I think it probably was clean, and normally uh, that was clean. Normally, from a basketball player point of view, when you swipe down and the ball goes straight down, that's all ball, and that's a tough call against Lexi. 
Lexi Mead, she played very, very well uh, tonight. But, Lexi uh, Mead finishes and she walks out with 11 points, four assists to lead the way for WKU. It's a big call. I mean, now the game's down to eight. It doesn't doesn't feel like it's uh, it's not a lot of energy right no. now. I'll just be honest with you. Like the game's over. The game is not over. Uh, Latek makes this. They're down seven, and they'll be able to set up their press too. Walker hits the free throw. Here's the press. We haven't seen that from them today, so that's something they like to do. WKU beats it in a hurry. You know, Greg Collins says he wants WKU to beat full core presses with the intention to score, but maybe not necessarily here with only 90 seconds left and a lead to protect. Hope Savori with the shot clock down to eight. Now it's Acacia Hayes, three ball, no. Offensive rebound, Jalen Foster, ball fake. Robertson's there, she's denied. Jalen Foster ran into a brick wall named Anna Law Robertson and a foul is called. That still is a monster offensive rebound that time by Foster. Even though she got her shot blocked, that still, it kept the possession. And now Hope Savari goes to the line. Now Hope's a good free throw shooter, but more than just being a good free throw shooter, she's a clutch, clutch shooter. They got Loda Sants on the foul. You just saw her trot off in exchange for Maya Brennan and Hope Savori. Yeah. On cue, hits the free throw. Yeah, she's uh, she's one of those where her percentage goes up uh, near the end of the game. And I think a lot of that's just it's confidence and focus. Western Kentucky is a minute away from winning their fifth consecutive game. Lee in the lane. She's stuck. Loop pass for Nativi. Extra feed. It's Lee. Top of the arc three. Does not go. Jalen Foster. She snags the rebound. And Louisiana Tech backs off. They probably need to foul, but uh, I guess they're going to play it out right here. Who do you want to foul? Everyone on the floor right now can shoot free throws. Acacia Hayes drives inside, high off the glass. That could be the nail in the coffin. I believe it was. She missed her last three layups that time and didn't finish that one, and that probably will do it. Brandon driving kick. Walker three. Nothing there. Rebound for Gilvin. Shot clock to game clock differential of about a second. Yeah, that game's over right now. La Tech is not going to foul, and a uh, big, big win for the Lady Toppers in this rivalry. Western Kentucky has now won 12 of the last 13 between the two. But Western Kentucky led pretty much wire to wire. The Lady Tops have won five in a row, and they are making their case as a contender in Conference USA. Five in a row and one time Western Kentucky was four and eight. And now they're nine and eight and big win against a really good Louisiana Tech team. Well, WKU doing a lot right in this one with a 66-55 win. You look up and down the stat sheet and they spread the love. Odie Betancourt though off the bench with a game best, rather a team best, 14 points. Yeah, from averaging less than two a game and less than seven minutes, you know, that's, uh, but that's what makes Western Kentucky a difficult team to play against. Uh, their leading scorer is Acacia Hayes with only a 10 a game. Anybody can score for, for Western Kentucky, and that's a, that's a really a big win from a team that's very, very hot right now, five in a row. Jalen Foster gave you 11 with six rebounds, five rebounds for Maya Meredith, and WKU wins their fifth consecutive game and now, again, and third, definitely a Conference USA contender. And, and they're on the NBA schedule. Third game this week they've won, and they got one more on Saturday. Before we say goodbye, we say thank you to everyone making it possible. Our stage manager, Max Hine, and our producer, Elijah Smith. Our director, Ethan Carlson. They know a thing or two about each other. Heck, they were roommates back in college, and now they're pressing all the right buttons in the truck. WKU heads to Charlotte on Saturday. Louisiana Tech ships over to Middle Tennessee. The final score, 66-55 for John Butler. I'm Brad Klein. Thank you so much for watching, and good night.